This is the National Archives podcast series, UFO File Releases, presented by Dr. David Clark. Hi David, welcome to National Archives. <coughs> Thanks for helping us on these files. Can you please introduce yourself? I'm David Clark, teach um, journalism at Sheffield Hallam University, and uh, I've been interested in UFOs for a number of years, and have been um, working on the, uh, the records that have been released at the National Archives on the subject. What have the National Archives released today? From today they've, that is the beginning of a process in which the, um, the MOD are transferring a number of files, I think around 160 in all, over a three-year period. And, and what's been released today are the first collection of files under that transfer, which, which are eight files collected by different departments, branches of the Ministry of Defence, from the early 1980s and late 1970s. And it's going to be a chronological release released over the next three years be probably about five to ten files released every other month and the first um, collection as I've, as I've mentioned is from the early 1980s and late 1970s and where can people access these files from uh, they can be um, they can be accessed via the, the the national archives website and there'll be a special section of the website where you will be able to download the files as pdfs and i believe that there will be uh, they'll be free under the freedom of information act for the first month What's the significance of these files? Why are people going to find these files interesting and, and what, are, what are they going to reveal that maybe was previously unknown? Well, it's been known for some time that the, uh, the Ministry of Defence and before the Ministry of Defence, the, the Air Ministry, have been collecting um, or receiving these reports that, of things that people have seen in the sky that they haven't been able to explain since at least the, the early 1950s. And there's been... Um, a section of the Ministry of Defence um, that, have, that have been responsible for looking at these reports from the point of view of whether they're of any defence significance. Now, there's been lots of speculation, both on the part of um, civilian UFO investigators and by the media over the years as to what, really, the MOD did with this um, material, what conclusions did they reach. Did, they, did the Ministry of Defence believe we were being visited by aliens? All those sorts of questions... And also, there's a lot of conspiracy theories that have grown up, both in this country and um, in the USA, about the military interest in UFOs. And what we're actually getting to see in these papers are the actual facts. People can now be able to examine the actual papers, the um, modest inquiries that were done by the ministry into the reports that they've received over the years. And they've received something like, I think, 11,000 reports from members of the public and from um, the armed forces since the the late 1950s. All of these have been collected, filed away. Some of them have been um, investigated. There's a lot of interest in there for historians, for social historians, military historians. Whether you believe that we're being visited by aliens or not, there's still a lot of social and historical significance in these reports. What's been released um, regarding the House of Lords debate is, is, is very interesting because at the period, this, this is from the very earliest period when, the, when this new file release begins from the late 1970s, early 1980s, and this, um, this debate was held in the middle of the winter of discontent when there was um, strike action, there were bodies piling up in the streets. It was a pretty miserable time, and in the winter of 1978-1979, Lord Clancarty who um, was a, a UFO in enthusiast. He received his title, went to the House of Lords, and the, one of the first things he decided to do was to table a debate, which was quite unique, as far as I'm aware, in, um, in parliamentary history, where in the middle of a national crisis, the House of Lords, for, for one day, halted proceedings and had this full-length, full-day debate on UFOs. And Lord Clancarty's aim was to get was to persuade the the Ministry of Defence to launch a, um, a public inquiry into um, the UFO mystery, which at that time in the late 1970s was very much in people's minds. There'd been a, a lot of, of, of sightings around the world, following um, a lot of media publicity. Um, Steven Spielberg's film Close Encounters of the Third Kind had been released in 1977. And it's quite interesting that if you look at the, the figures for the number of sightings reported to the Ministry of Defence, um, the number of sightings doubled in 1978 to 1979, which shows that the, the amount of interest there was at this time. So Clancarty, because of the fact that he was a member of the House of Lords, he was able to, um, to get the subject raised officially. 
And what we're actually seeing in these files is the, uh, what went on in the background. The Minister of Defence said we have to take this subject seriously. This is going to be debated in the, uh, in the, in the Lords. And the papers show that they went to a considerable amount of, of, of work to actually to, to produce background briefings for Lord Strabolgi, who was to uh, deliver the, um, the government's uh, response in the House of Lords. And quite a number of um, eminent scientists who were in the Lords at the time took part in the debate. There was all manner of different ideas and theories and beliefs that were, that were aired during the, um, during the debate. Can you give me some of the examples of from the information, the points that were raised in, the, in that report? Um, well, the, the background briefing is quite, quite interesting, actually, because it does actually set out in there the government policy on UFOs, and, and they keep emphasising again and again that they aren't, they aren't interested in the scientific significance of unidentified flying objects. They're only interested in the, um, the possible um, defence significance. So the basic policy that they had was that all they were interested in, from, from, the, from the point of view of UFOs, it was to determine whether a specific, something that was seen or reported, could it be a, an enemy aircraft? Because at the time we were still in the Cold War and there was still the threat from the Soviet Union. So from the military point of view, UFOs, they were only interested in from the point of view of whether it could be perhaps a, a Russian aircraft or a Russian spy plane or something of that kind. As soon as they were able to say this particular UFO isn't, an enemy aircraft, they weren't interested then in pursuing it any further. The response that was put together by the Ministry of Defence to, to present the, um, the, the Ministry's position in the House of Lords, the, the closing remark that, um, that were made by the Ministry in their presentation were, as for telling the public the truth about UFOs, the truth is simple. There really are many strange phenomena in the sky, and these are invariably reported by rational people. But there is a wide range of natural explanations to account for such phenomena, things such as base debris burning up in the atmosphere, stars and bright planets, aircraft seen from unusual ang angles, and natural phenomena such as ball lightning. Their position was that there is nothing to suggest to Her Majesty's government that such phenomena are alien spacecraft. Uh, the Americans were obviously interested in this early on, and they, they did a report which suggested that 90% of all phenomena could be explained by uh, something else. Could you Tell, tell us a bit more about that, that report. Yeah, well, um, the, 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 the phenomenon of, U of flying saucers or uh, UFOs as it became was taken very seriously by the Americans. The first, the first sighting was made in America in 1947 by Kenneth Arnold, which actually coined the, the, the phrase flying saucers. And the, the American, the US Air Force, set a project to, to investigate this, these sightings. It was first known as Project Sign, it became Project Grudge, and in 1952 it became Project Blue Book. And they collected something like, well, several tens of thousands of sightings were reported to them. And in 1969, they, uh, the American Air Force awarded a contract to the University of Colorado to study this material. And they produced a, a report which concluded, as you've said, that 90% of these sightings could be explained by um, known phenomena, man-made man phenomena and um, natural phenomena, and that they recommended no further work was done on it. Nothing of scientific significance had, had emerged from the material. And from 1969, Project Blue Book was closed. And the Americans since that time have said that they've got no official interest in the subject any, any, any further. What's unique about the British records that are now being released is that although we relied upon those American conclusions, we, the British never did a, a similar study like Project Blue Book, we decided to, nevertheless to continue collecting these reports. We didn't bring our investigations to a close, seemingly, and, and so the, the Ministry of Defence have continued to, to, to receive these reports. Occasionally they've looked into them in a little bit more detail ever since, right up to present, which I think is, is where the British records are unique because the Americans, their records end in 1969. So m moving on to the records that we've just released today, um, what do you think are the most significant documents or the most interesting documents contained therein? There are a mixture of, of documents that have been re re released. Um, there are reports files which are run in a chronological order, so you, you've got simple collections of reports that have been made to the MOD by members of the public who've, who've written in or, they've, or they've, they've called the police or... The, the local Air Force base after they've seen something. There are also correspondence files, which have got lots of um, interesting material, internal correspondence between the different 